have to congratulate you on your induction to the Australian Academy of Science. Now, how does a girl who grew up in Western New York in the US go on to become one of Australia's most distinguished scientists? That's an interesting question. It's been a long road to get there, I think. As one of the nation's leading agronomists now, what are some of the most critical and urgent problems do you see that, that need solving right now? And what, what worries you the most? Well, it's a challenging time for producers because farms are getting larger. They have to be globally competitive as well from the export standpoint. For just about every herbicide we have in Australia, we have numerous resistant weeds, and we have one of the largest problems in terms of herbicide resistance in the world. Uh, with Why is an that? Well, annual ryegrass is resistant to nearly every product we've created, but here we have the appropriate climate and conditions which is just generated and the usage pattern in which we use chemistry, which is generated and selected for resistance in these pesticides successfully. So the major problem is resistance in weeds, but we also see resistance in insects, fungi, and in livestock, obviously parasites that plague livestock. So what are the implications there for Australia's export markets? Well. It's confusing and complicated right now because depending on the country you're working with, they have different restrictions about use of various products. So some of our common chemistry is now being banned in Europe, Japan, Asian countries. And so how we produce the crop is becoming more challenging here because if we're exporting, we have to be aware of the regulations and restrictions. So what we're trying to do in our research program is develop an integrated management program for both weeds, pathogens, and insect pests that not only allow us to produce a quality crop in terms of yields and product quality, but also works together with producers to allow them to export successfully and also at the same time maintain a low level of resistance or avoid resistance building up from the products and the actual uh, performance and rotations that we use. So what's been achieved to date that has really made a mark and, and changed thinking as well as outcomes? Well, I'd say probably one of the first things is how we've managed weeds effectively over the last 20 years to try to be both effective in managing weed seeds going into the seed bank, but also to try to limit the spread of resistance. I have to ask you about the dung beetle because it's had a lot of attention, that tiny little thing. What is so important or, or special about the work that you've done on the dung beetle? This has been a really interesting project and we're just wrapping this up now, Virginia. It's been about five years since we've taken on this project. It's been one of the largest projects funded by the Rural Development for Profit, Research Development for Profit project um, through Meat and Livestock Australia and the Department of Agriculture. And we've been really fortunate to use the dung beetle to help to improve on-farm management of pests, as well as building soil fertility and improving pasture growth and thereby livestock health and productivity. And the dung beetle itself is a very interesting species. They've been around since the time of the dinosaur. They have developed to process dung. They Dung is their food source. And they also shred, dwell in dung, roll it or tunnel to increase the amount of organic matter from the dung below the surface so of the soil. So they're burrowing it down So they're the burrowing it down. Not long after you were inducted into the Australian Academy of Science, I note that you said it's a very exciting time to be in science. Why? 
Well, I think right now we're in an era of information transfer that's just astounding. We're bombarded with new findings and new discoveries and use of technology that we never had before. So it's very exciting because we're no longer working in a box. We're working with many people from different fields and different practices. And most of our projects have stakeholders which also assist. So while we do laboratory and controlled environment research, we're also doing on-farm research. And combining all of those together, um, we have a diverse team that we support of people working in crop protection, soil science, agronomy, plant science, et cetera. But we also do molecular biology, we study genomics, we use metabolomics and other omics technology to solve some of these complex problems. So it's an exciting time for people who want to never be bored, <laughs> do different things on a daily basis, and interact with stakeholders that really care about the results we generate. I've been very fortunate in that CSU supports this multidisciplinary work and has also encouraged it. And so together we've built a team of experts that hopefully is having a strong impact on regional and also national economy. But while we're doing that, we're att attracting international recognition for the work that we also do. Well, you certainly have done that. Professor Weston, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you, Virginia. Virginia.